Hello everybody, welcome back to Norwich Talk for another match reaction. Norwich City have just about beaten Rotherham United by one goal to nil in a game that was officiated terribly. Now, I'm going to make a sweeping statement in that I think that is probably the worst refereeing performance we've seen in a Norwich game this season. Um, I'd happily let you challenge me in the comments down below. But it was diabolical, not just for Norwich City, but for Rotherham too. Um, you've obviously got that early goal from Rotherham, which it gave me the vibes from the Stoke game many years ago, I think it was 17-18 season, where the referee has just sort of... He gave a penalty for nothing. And I got that feeling from that Rotherham goal where literally nothing happened, but it was disallowed and it was to Norwich's advantage. So inside I was quite relieved. But for Rotherham, they were massively hard done by and the refereeing for the entire game was terrible, really. Um, so I'll leave that alone there and we'll look at the game as a whole. I think we'll start with the starting lineup as we always do. Ben Gibson was out because of an injury. Um, I read that he was on the bench, but then he wasn't. So hopefully that's not too serious. I'm sure we'll get an update nice and soon. Um, I'm literally filming this just after the game. So I imagine we'll find out quite soon anyway. Fingers crossed, as I said, it's not too serious. But Christoph Zimmerman at this level is a fantastic player. I thought he was as solid as a rock today. Um, really impressed with him, actually, to be honest with you now I think about it. And Grant Hanley as well. I thought Norwich were really comfortable in defence. And yeah, the, um, the as I said, the lineup. I was really pleased with it. Again, Daniel Farker wasn't good change it unless he needed to was he um that's quite an obvious thing to say now you know you could sort of copy and paste the first half review of, of Coventry really in that it was really good from Norwich it was really positive and the word I used on Twitter was vibrant and it sort of Norwich looked like champions today in the first half in my opinion they were creating chance after chance after chance um and I also tweeted this as well on the Norwich Talk account the fact Rotherham were sort of having a go and trying to make a game of it made the whole thing quite an interesting spectacle to watch and that isn't something that you really see when you watch Norwich this season you see a lot of teams often sit back and defend and sort of try and take a point you've got to tip your hat to, to Paul Warren and Rotherham in that they came to Carrow Road with in my eyes the intentions of winning the game um, and it allowed Norwich to play their own football um, again when when two teams um, sorry try and attack Norwich it creates these opportunities it creates these openings at the back and you just want Norwich to take them chances um, and take advantage of teams sort of being a bit more open than usual and I think today without the finishing we did essentially which I know is, is such a weird thing to say but the finishing was, was really off and Norwich really could have had four or five goals in the first half. I was trying to think of the first half chances specifically um, and there's a couple that stick out to me. The main one is obviously the goal which is a, a brilliant finish from Timu Puki. You've got the one where he's cut it back. Um, you've got the one-on-one the -on -one that he missed. You've got the one where I can't remember for the life of me. It might have been Vranjic or Campwell who's cut the ball back to Emi Buendia and the defenders got in the way. I don't think anything really could have been done differently there. It was just fairly decent defending. Um, but in the first half, it was really positive. And the main thing I take away from that is the fact it looks like this Norwich team have fully got their confidence back. Um, and for this team, as we always say, don't we? Confidence is so, so important. Um, and in this division, I said the same thing against Coventry. Again, it's referring to the idea of you can just copy and paste the review from that game. There's such a golfing difference in quality uh, when it comes to teams in Norwich City. These players who play for Norwich now, the likes of Buendia, Pukki, Max Ahrens, Todd Cantwell, are now experienced players in this division, um, which I think I think it really does show on the pitch. Now, at half-time, uh, you know, again, I, I keep drawing comparison to Coventry. It's difficult not to, but... In the second half, you want Norwich to pick up and maintain the momentum that they had created, um, but they didn't really, which isn't an issue for me because of how sort of defensively solid we have been this season. There was never a point in this game where I realistically thought Norwich were actually going to concede a goal. I know there was a couple of let-offs, um, but I was usually I was fairly quite confident, which is a, a new feeling as a Norwich City fan. It feels fairly odd, uh, fairly odd to be sort of confident in the defence. But at half time, you want Norwich to replicate the momentum that they generated in the first half, and they didn't really. There was a couple of chances um, and it didn't really help that the game was hindered by such terrible refereeing like I think the worst decision for me is when Pookie is one on one um, just because he presses a defender I don't really know what he did to him um, but the referee decided to blow up for a foul there was a defender for Rotherham I can't remember his name um, but it took so long for him to get booked and he was making such reckless challenges and I just thought if Rotherham go down to 10 men maybe the Norwich storm that game they win that game through a 4-0 um, but over Overall, I think Daniel Fark will be not fairly disappointed. He'll be quite disappointed with the fact that we've not scored three or four. But realistically, you, you get three points at the end of the day for a 1-0. You get the same amount of points as you would for, for winning 7-0. Um, so that's all that matters. And obviously, you look at results elsewhere. Swansea slipping up. Brentford slipping up. This weekend could not have gone any better for Norwich City. And when you sat there watching this game, you think... 
right, results have gone perfectly for Norwich. It would be such a Norwich City thing to do um, to just go and slip up and not take advantage. Now, there are going to be many twists and turns for the rest of the season. We know that for sure. But this game specifically, we can just enjoy it. We can just relax. I said this after Stoke. It's a weekend where Norwich City can finally just relax, um, which again, to have that feeling again, is really nice as a football fan because I know football does stress us out quite a lot, doesn't it? Um, we've obviously got a big game coming up against Birmingham away, which will provide a slightly different test to um, to these other teams like Rotherham, uh, Stoke and Coventry who look to attack Norwich. I really don't think Birmingham will with Ita Karanka in charge. That's not his style. Um, I'll refer you back to the 1-0 win at Carra Road where where it was literally 11 men behind the ball for the entire game. Um, so I imagine it's going to provide a, a slightly different task for Norwich, um, which I'm, I'm interested to see how we, we deal with. And to be honest with you, with the confidence that we're playing with, I wouldn't be surprised if we, we go and sort of dominate that game and hopefully, fingers crossed, win um, quite comfortably. But as I said earlier, and as we'll always say in every video we make on this channel whilst we're in the championship, you can't predict the championship. It would be a foolish thing to do. Um, in terms of my star performance from this game, I think Christoph Zimmerman was really, really good. Now, I've not got any stats to back that up, but I'm sure you'll agree with me. Amy Buendia, again, um, just creates so many chances. It's quite ridiculous. It's quite scary. Uh, it begs the question, what on earth are Norwich City going to do when he leaves? Um, Timu Puki could have had four or five goals today. I think he'll be really disappointed with himself. There was that one-on-one -on -one that he missed um, from the ball over from McLean. McLean, another player who was really, really good today. Um, and it's quite good for him as well because I've been getting on his back a little bit recently because I don't think his performances have really been up to the sort of standard that we expect of him. But today he was sublime for me and that ball over to Timu Puki that he didn't take, uh, the chance he didn't take was, was really disappointing to see. But as I said, to be honest with you, at this point, it's just about results, isn't it? We've seen enough of Norwich City this season to realise that we can still play football. Um, but, you know, in terms of individual performances, I think Timu Puku will be slightly disappointed that he's not scored a good three or four goals because he quite easily could have. Todd Cantwell, again just looks so confident at the moment and to be honest with you I've seen a few people tweet this and I absolutely agree in that he quite clearly knows that he is better than most at this level and that's a that's a good thing that's not arrogance to me the fact that he plays like it as well and I think he's now realizing it himself that he is is only a good thing for Norwich and the fact that he has got this um, massive quality about him hopefully uh, will be a, a good thing for Norwich and again today he was was really really good. Vrancic in the 10 I don't think he did too much wrong to be honest with you I think if Timu Puki takes a couple more of those chances that releases the pressure off him a little bit um, before the game I saw a few discussions on Twitter about who should be playing in the 10 I'm happy to keep Vrancic there to be honest with you I, and I think Daniel Farker will in that he doesn't want to sort of disrupt the flow because this Norwich team are playing with a real rhythm at the moment and that's such a positive thing um, um, and, you know, long may it continue. And I think if you were to take out such an important part of the way Norwich play, which is that number 10 role and sort of disrupt it, that could be not catastrophic, but it could affect things sort of negatively. Um, you knew this again today. Really, really good. He had a couple of good runs, didn't he? Max Aarons, as usual, was really, really solid. Um, the good thing about Max Aarons is that when he doesn't play to his full potential, that's still a good sort of 7.5 slash 8 out of 10. That's how good Max Aarons is. Um, Tim Krull had a bit of a wobbly one, didn't he, uh, in the first half. I was a bit confused as to what he was doing. Sort of reminded me of Grant Hanley against Coventry. But other than that, skip again, I should just say quickly. Really, really good. I absolutely love Ollie Skip. It's, it's unhealthy at this point, but he's such a joy to watch. And he's such a useful part of Norwich City's team. And I think you take him out and Norwich look less defensively solid. But we've not got to take him out this season. We're going to enjoy him whilst he's still here um, and enjoy the Norwich City team whilst they're on a good streak of form. Fingers crossed we can carry that on uh, to Birmingham. I hope that we'll be able to do a live podcast for you um, before the Birmingham game. I imagine we will. Um, so if we do, I'll see you then. If I don't, I'll see you very, very soon.